Good afternoon. Welcome to Amen. Welcome to Bible study here at First Fellowship Charlotte. It's our hope, it's our prayer that uh, everyone is doing well, everyone is experiencing the richness of God's favor uh, and the presence of his anointing on their lives and that uh, we are uh, doing reasonably well, amen, with a reasonable portion of health and a reasonable portion of strength and a reasonable portion of ability. That's all that we can really ask for uh, at this time because, again, God doesn't owe us anything. He doesn't owe us uh, anything. In fact, we owe him everything. And to be able to function, to be able to have peace and be able to just exist, sometimes it's the blessing. Amen. I think sometimes we sometimes we act like spoiled children. We think that because we're still alive, that means God must be doing some extra stuff. But we have to remember and realize that everything that we're, we receive is a gift from God. And, and God is like any other, yes, he's like any other parent. That uh, he determines how he's going, what gifts he's going to give us by the gratitude and humility and the obedience that we show him. Amen. And so for those of us who show a lot of humility, a lot of gratitude, a lot of obedience, then you, we're probably going to be showered with gifts more so than those who don't. And those who don't, you're probably not getting as many gifts as those who do. And so, uh, and so, amen. So it, it is, it is, uh, 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 it, it is always a blessing to be to to be in the land of the living. It's always a blessing to be here with the uh, saints one more time, and it's always a blessing to uh, uh, be able to uh, uh, fellowship one with another uh, in regards to uh, the rich word of God. Amen. Uh, amen. So let's do this. Let's open up with our opening word of prayer. Then what we will do, we'll have our uh, uh, our um, question and answer session. If we got, if there are any questions that we can answer, uh, we're going to try to answer them. You know, if I can't answer them today, I'll go home and I will um, uh, uh, research the question and then come back next uh, uh, Wednesday with the answer. Amen. Praise God. And then after we have our Q&A session, we will move into our the meat of our lesson here today. Amen. We're starting chapter four. We ended chapter three last week, so we're going to start chapter four today. Amen. We're going to look at Cain and Abel, uh, them two brothers. Amen. And uh, we're going to see what thus says the Lord uh, in regards to uh, our Bible study lesson here today. So here, let's open up with a word of prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we come to you right now. Thank you for this day, for this is the day that you have made, God. We are glad. We are rejoicing in it. Father God, we thank you for, God, how you showered us with your love, your grace, and your mercy. That never has there been a time when we can say that you didn't love us, you weren't graceful to us, nor were you merciful to us. At all times, God, we were recipients of things, God, that we did not earn, God, and we could not afford. But God, you did it so that we would know just how much you love us, just how much you care for us, and just how much you want us to experience the best. Now, God, we ask that you would utilize that same determination to give us the best as we are as we are coming together here now for Bible study, open up the windows of heaven, pour us out the knowledge, the, the information, the uh, clarification, and the edification necessary so that we may continue to develop into the disciples and stewards and bring you glory, honor, and praise. Father God, we bless your name for those who are, are joining us here today, and we thank you for that. God, we pray for those who wanted to be here and wanted to join us uh, for Bible study but could not. God, we pray for those, God, uh, that you're going to send our way to join us here at First Fellowship Charlotte to be part of the body of Christ here. And God, we pray right now that your Holy Spirit will rest, rule, and abide on this Bible study. Now, God, have your way. Do what you want to do. Make us aware uh, and knowledgeable of who we are, what we are, and why you've called us to be your children and your servants. It's in your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. 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 We, we are here at Bible study, so we're going to have our Q&A session. Amen. So hopefully, prayerfully, there's some questions I can answer. Amen. So why don't we get started with that? Uh, a 
about Paul and uh, Samuel. Mm -hmm. And um, how Samuel went to Saul because the Lord had told him that he didn't do what he should have done. Right. And the gist of the matter was, he said the Lord says obedience is better than sacrifice. That's right. So that told us about uh, and I think at one point in time, we had talked to you one other time about tithes. Right. So it's the same question, forgive us, because obviously we didn't take... <laughs> 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 yeah, so, um, I don't know why tithes came to mind. Maybe because it said obedience is better than sacrifice. Right. And I'm just giving you a little bit of background on the different things that's going through my mind, and I probably should have researched it a little bit more so I could feel a little bit more confident. But it's all right. when you have a Cain and Abel, Abel gave uh, hmm. the Lord a sacrifice that was pleasing to him. Right. And Cain did not. Right. So we're saying, okay, so he wasn't obedient. But, but okay, I'm, I'm jumping around to get to my main okay. point of question. Um, and we know Malachi says, bring me all your tithes the, the, the storehouse. storehouse. Mm -hmm. I don't think it says when to do that, but it says to bring them in. Right. Paul, he writes about, does he say on the first day of the week, bring your tithe? Uh, that's what you should have looked up. But uh, that seems to ring a bell the first day of the week. Right, and it, I, it, he he would be referencing uh, the 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 Sundays that that would that is that is, the Lord's day that is the first day of the week, and right. that, and that yeah. was that was the time that eventually became uh, uh, our time of worship because the burgeoning church Christian church wanted to separate itself uh and have its own identity from uh judaism all right and so the jews typ typically worshiped on saturday mornings uh, because you know when the sun went down on friday evening all the way to saturday evening that was the sabbath you know for the jews uh the day didn't start at 12 o'clock at night it started when the sun set because remember we talked about in Genesis that in the beginning there was darkness. And so the beginning of the day begins in darkness. It begins in the, when the sun has set. And then they would go to worship on Saturday, uh, the last day of the week. And so the Christian, uh, one, of the Christ, one of the incidents of Christian worship is that the early church leaders moved the worship from Saturday like the Jews to Sunday morning for their own so when Paul is saying bring it on the first day he's saying bring it with you to church present bring it in. he Paul is still gotta remember Paul is still operating only with an Old Testament he doesn't have a New Testament gospel to, to utilize yet and so uh, he's still depending on Malachi 3 he's still depending on stories spread out throughout the uh, the Old Testament about characters tithing uh, and what and what he he understood based on what the information was there was that uh, tithing involved giving uh, one tenth one tenth of the first fruits uh, that any uh, farmer uh, uh, harvested or the first uh, offspring. Of the herd, whether your herd was a sheep of flock or a herd of cows or uh, a herd of pigs, um, whatever it was, the first offsprings from uh, your your herd were were to be given until the Lord. And so, um, when Samuel though gets with Saul and is talking uh, about, can I, can I ask you for a moment? Yes. Okay, what's but the question? Go ahead, because I think most of what you're saying, I realize those things. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, so do you want to ask a question? Or do you, can I or, or, a question? Yeah, you can ask me a question. Go ahead. Okay. I guess the question is when Paul says on the first, on the Lord's Day or the first day, um, how should that be given? 
like, I know the scripture also says that the Lord doesn't want anyone to come before him empty-handed. So it doesn't matter you know, how little they have. It was on a certain day or a certain day that he had um, uh, prescribed that. My question is, if you get your money at a certain time, mm-hmm. like in the lump sum, do you have to pay it in that lump sum or... Like our customers to come together every Sunday. Right. Put the money aside. Right. So that prefer or we prefer, and I don't know if that's being obedient or disobedient, to come and gather and give it to the Lord that day. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I I understand what you're saying. In fact, I, I have I have an answer for it. I was going I was getting there to, anyway. I that that's where I was going anyway. Uh uh but okay, it's, it's, it's just that I didn't get my question out, but that's the real question. Okay. Uh, yes. How do you give it? Oh, okay. Do you break it down incrementally or does it have to be given in, in one lump sum? In the lump sum when it says the first fruit. So oh, oh, for me in my mind or our mind, we take the first fruit and we put it aside so we never bother it. Right. We give it out incrementally. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I understand your question and, and that was one of the things I was going to hit on uh just before okay. you just before you interject it. Amen. Amen. Trust trust the spirit yeah, of God. I just want to make sure you got my question. Oh I, okay. I, I got it. Amen. Praise God. So um the the requirement is to bring the first fruit. Alright. God I don't think God is God is as strict as Paul is, okay? Paul is providing guidance to persons that would have never brought ties to ties to to any kind of worship, all right? And so because he's dealing with Gentile converts who would have never engaged in this anyway, he's he's directing a certain time to bring it, okay? However, God himself never indicates when is the appropriate time to bring it. In fact, for God is whenever you receive a blessing, or you receive wages, the time to bring your wages whenever you see it. So, let's say, for example, you don't get paid until the 15th of the month, all right? There's no need to stress yourself out at the first of the month trying to make your tithe payment if you don't have it at the first of the month. If you don't get it to the 15th of the month, and then you bring it to church the Sunday after the 15th, that's fine, all right? Here's another thing about tithing, all right? God wants the tithe. How you bring it to the church is your business, all right? So let me give you an example. A lot of pastors, and I'm one of those of this mindset, that if we're, if we're going to do multiple services, what we would do is split our tithe by the number of services, okay? So if I had a $200 tithe for that Sunday and we were doing two services, I would split my tithe into one hundred dollars and one hundred dollars, so that and so that the people at each service see me give my tithe. All right, that's what that that's really what we're doing. You know, other people, however, because uh, again, uh, other people uh, may say I get paid once a month, and yes, I could give it all at one time, or I want to I want to spread it out over the four. Sunday. So let's say if I got my tithe is two hundred dollars a month. All right, that's that's ten percent of, of, of let's say that's ten percent of what I made a month. All right. So, uh, so then I would then it, God has no problem if I had taken that two hundred dollars, segregated it from the rest of my pay, and then took fifty dollars each week and dropped it into into the offering because that's the two hundred dollars four four Sundays four times fifty is two hundred. God is not. A strickler as to how you pay it. God is a strickler about you paying it, and and the danger for some of us. So let me also say this: the danger for some of us is that we will say, "All right, I've got two hundred dollar tied to pay for this month. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to pay fifty, 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 fifty four Sundays." And so you do good the first two Sundays. By the third Sunday, something comes up, and what all you got left is that last one hundred dollars of your tithe. And you're sitting here, you're saying to yourself, do I trust God to provide the blessing or do I just go ahead and dip into the tithe? And and the problem is many people aren't faithful enough to trust God to provide the blessing, the financial blessing. So what they do, they dip into the tithe. 
Now, if you're the kind of person that doesn't have the discipline and the faith to hold, to, to keep the, the, the ties separate and inviolable, then I would say pay it all one time. But if you're the kind of person that you budget your money, you know what you got, you know you're not spending beyond that, and you know that you the tithe is protective, you can you can break it up in, in however many payments you want to break it up. The, the most important thing is not to cheat, steal, or rob God of his tithes. All right? Um, now, in saying that, let me also say this. All right? Because I want to go back to Samuel. You start with... Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 50. You started with that. There's a reason why you started with that. And I want to go back to it uh, to address what you haven't asked uh, uh, so that we can get to what you are asking. Samuel tells Saul uh, uh, that, is, that's, that uh, obedience is better than sacrifice. That, that, that the Lord does not delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as he does as obedience, and that he, obeying the word of the Lord is, uh, that rebellion is no less a sin than divination is, and stubbornness is like iniquity and idolatry. Uh, 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 the issue with tithing is obedience. That's it. Um, it, it. It's not so much how much you give, it's the obedience to what God tells you to give. Uh, I, I think I said this Sunday during the service. In Old Testament times, the tithe was a, was strictly 10%. All right, It was strictly the first 10%. Not any 10%, but the first 10% off the top. Okay, Jesus comes behind that and says, wait a second. For some people, giving 10%, however you want to give it, is easier than other people. In other words, if I'm a billionaire... And I'm making a hundred million dollars a week. Giving ten million dollars is not a big thing for me because I, I I've still got ninety million dollars. I'm my, my bills are paid. All right. However, if I'm making a hundred dollars a week and I got to give you ten dollars, ninety dollars it's harder to live on ninety dollars than it is ninety million dollars. All right. And so uh, Jesus was saying, when you tithe, you should tithe in proportion to how God has blessed you. So if God has blessed you to make a hundred million dollars a week, your tithe should be greater than ten million dollars. It should be, because it doesn't cost you a million dollars to live a year. We know. We 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 we, we know. All right. Uh, and so uh, and also what Jesus also does. Jesus also helps us understand that our tithe is not just our treasure. Okay that our tithe is our treasure plus our time plus our talent okay and that for some people our tithe is our tithe is our treasure plus our time plus our talent i'll say it again it's our treasure time and talent that there are some people uh that just cannot give the the, the kind of treasure of a tithe that other people can but we have the time and talent to offer God that is received in the same way in fact there are some times when we have a more than enough treasure in the house of God but we ain't got enough talent or people giving enough time to put that treasure to work Amen. Hello, hello, uh, Alexis. It's so good. Alexis is joining us on on, on Facebook Live. Amen. Uh, she's one of our members. Amen. Uh, but again, some of us, some of us, sometimes there's no money to give. We don't have anything to tithe, but we do have our time and our talent to tithe. And so, so Jesus expands this understanding of tithing. Uh, beyond just money given to also your time that you spend in the presence of the Lord doing uh, in the service you give to the Lord and so you know um, sister Carol you may again let's, so let's go back and say go back to the example let's say you only have two thousand dollars a month that's your that's your lump, uh, retirement sum that you get a month and so you already said I, I want to. I'm going to give two hundred dollars because that's ten percent of the two. The, the two thousand. 
but I feel like there's more that I could be giving, but I just cannot afford financially to give the church more. Well, you know what? If that's the case, then we can give more of our time. Okay? So, so you know, you're retired, all right? And, and hopefully, prayerfully, you didn't retire to take on another profession. You retired so that you didn't have to work anymore. So that means you probably got some time on your hands all right so what 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 you could do with that time is let's say uh so y'all you haven't met sister eileen tyson let's say you met her you know uh, she's an elderly woman she's blind and many times she needs people to help her do things so like going to the going to the grocery store she just can't get her purse get up and go get on the bus she needs someone to take her and to help her get the stuff bring her back that may be your time your tie of the time okay uh, here, here's another one, all right? Uh, many times people come to church and they, they take their kids. They want to know, do you have a child care uh, service going on while we're in service? And they go deposit their kids in child care, in the child care worship service, uh, the youth worth of service, and come back to the door, and they don't think about their kids anymore. Uh, and what they do, they trust that whoever has volunteered to be part of the youth ministry can candle their kids back there. But but what we don't ever realize is that many of the people in the youth ministry that work, they want to worship with adults too at some point. And at some point, someone needs to say, all right, y'all are working Sunday after Sunday tirelessly with our kids. We're going to give you a break this Sunday. We'll be back here with the kids. Y'all go worship with the adults. All right. That's that's tithing your, your talent. All right. Um, uh, but however you give it is however you give it. You know, it may be two week, two hours this week, maybe six hours next week. It may be three activities of church the next week and one activity this week. However you decide to tithe your time is however you decide to tithe it. And it's up to you in terms of tithing, how you decide to give your tithe. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. You're, you're welcome. Any other questions that I can answer while we're here? Amen. Don't be scared. Okay. Hey. <laughs> say, say what, Sister Carol? I hope it doesn't come up again from us anyway. Oh, it's, and if it does, and if it does, that's all right. I'll be ready to explain it to you again if it does. And, and, and really, this this is not you. I remember the question the question you asked. This ain't the same question. This is a a, a different question. Uh, um, um, it is it's deal with the same topic, but you haven't asked this question before. Cause I I cause, cause, cause I would remember in my mind I'd be I would be saying to myself, you know, we talked about this before, and I'm not getting that kind of we talked about this issue before. We've talked about we we talked about tithing before. And, and, and here's the thing, and, and I know we technically don't like to talk about tithing because we don't like the whole idea of the church browbeating anyone for money. Uh, but I'm of the position that for the Christian, I should have to browbeat you at all because this is part of your, your faith walk. You know, you don't 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 tell me that you are a faithful member of the body of Christ and you ain't paying tithes. Uh, 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 you know, I, I I'm a little younger than y'all, the two of you are, and and I know my professional colleagues that are my age, and I can't tell you how many times I have sat at in church beside my colleagues. Okay, my colleagues that were making hand over fist. Okay, they were. <laughs> amen. It, it, there's no other way to say it. Uh, uh, some, <laughs> some, some, some of my colleagues that on Monday through Friday, especially my uh, legal colleagues, would not come to court unless you paid them, and you pay. You had to pay them well. And we're sitting there, and we're sitting there in church, and I kind of look out the corner of my eye to see what they're writing on their in their checks, and they're writing ten dollar, twenty dollar tithe checks and it, it it would burn me up because that what you're offering is a what you're giving is an offering not a tithe a tithe, a tithe is a certain specific amount of what you've earned and and here's the thing if, since you've earned thousands of dollars this week a 20 a 10 or 20 dollar check is not a tithe it's an offering all right 
and, and so and it, it would and it would always I mean I, I'd be so I would, God would have to talk to me be like Al I need you to focus you're here to work with me I'll deal with them about the tithes I will and, and, he, and he does he does but tithing again if you are as much as a Christian as you say you are and I, and I know someone's gonna get offended by this good if, if God has to use me, if God has to use me to get you to be as be obedient like you should, fine. But if you are a, a, as much as a Christian as you say you are, then we should never have to mention tithing to you at all because you are you are eager to get your tithe in because you want God to know at all times that you're obedient. Amen. Amen. So so. I, it, it's a t it's a touchy topic that people don't like to talk about because people think you're talking about their money. And see, they, they, they're in lies a problem. It ain't their money. It ain't your money. It ain't my money. It's the blessing that God gave God gave to us. And what He wants to do is to see who do you love more, the blessing He gave you or Him, the blessed or. And and and, and many times, many of us. Failed that test, and, and and guess what? The and and many of us who are failing the test, we're faithful church attenders. We attend church all the time. We we engage we we engage in ministry all the time. But when it comes to tithe, tithing, we're not we're not obedient. And we said this a couple a couple excuse me a couple Wednesdays ago. You could be obedient in ninety nine other things. One time of being disobedient is enough to ruin it all. You know what I'm saying? You can be obedient in 99 other areas of your life. Being disobedient in regards to your tithe is enough to, 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 to ruin all your other obedience. And so it, it's, it's mindful. It, it, no, we need to be mindful of what God requires. And here's the thing. Sometimes... I, I'm not going to even lie to y'all, Sean and Carol. There are many times I've given a tithe, I've given an offering, and God says, give more. Right, I, I hate you. you know, and I'm like, wait a second, God. You Now you're dipping into the into the budget. And God's like, who do you trust? Do, do you trust me or do you trust your little penny any budget? And again, and again, you, you, you probably have experienced this. God's arithmetic is not like yours and mine. Because if if it, if it was up to our arithmetic, we would be broke. God's arithmetic, when you trust him, will have you living and existing at a time when you should have been broke. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so, so yeah, I, I think this was a good discussion, a good question about tithe. And, and I, don't, I don't think we, we, we understand it enough. In fact, I'm almost tempted to do a series on tithing at church uh, 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 so that we would learn what it means to tithe. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, oh, Lord, what's going on? Oh, my, 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 my computer just went down in as terms, uh, in terms of, 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 the, uh, of the live. Amen. You know what? That's fine. You know what? I, 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 I know. I know. That ain't nothing but the devil. Because the, the devil don't want, the devil don't want uh, our folks to be obedient. I hate you. I hate you. And, 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 and guess what? Obedient. Obedience because of ignorance is still obedience. Uh, I mean, disobedience because of ignorance is still disobedience. He 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 he's looking he's looking for uh for company. Uh, amen. He's looking for company. Uh, in the um, in in the uh in hell. You know what I'm saying? And so uh uh um. Uh, so since he's looking for a company in hell, he has no problem uh, 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 making sure you take actions that cause you to be uh, to end up in hell with him. And so, uh, so he, uh, so he rather keep you di ignorant of what you're required to do because again, God of disobedience is disobedience. He, God ain't worried about. Uh, uh, whether or not you are obedient or you're not obedient, he's worried about uh, uh, you doing what thus says the Lord. Amen. So we're gonna read. Let me hold on a second, Sean and Carol. Let me re, let, let, let me. Re, I'm gonna restart this 
because it, it looked like it was still going on my other computer, but on this computer it was saying it, it had shut down. So let me restart this. Amen. So use camera. Amen. Let's say, okay, FFCs, sits, all right, sits 2420, noon, day session of Bible study. Hopefully, first ones will, amen. So for our, our Bible study website, Amen. Let's hit live. Let's go live. Amen. We're going live back. We're coming. We're going live again. Amen. We are live once again. Again, we apologize. We are sorry uh, for the uh, shutting down. It, on our end, it said it was shut down. That the, this live stream was shut down. But we are, we are believing. Uh, but when we looked on the other computer, it was showing us still going. So just to make sure that we weren't uh, we we weren't in a place where uh, folks weren't receiving us we have reloaded the the live stream again thank you for your patience thank you for sticking around amen and we're going to continue to go pick up where we're going but as we said before uh, God would rather us not have us ignorant of the requirements because what he wants us to do, he wants us to succeed. He wants us to excel. He wants us to uh, 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 do that which he's called us to do. And, and in order to do that, that means uh, we need to be aware of something. And, and so uh, uh, it's one thing that of all the things that we don't want to be aware of within I, what, I, what I feel within Christianity is the obligation to pay our tithes. And, uh, and what that means. But here's the thing. The God we serve is so good, so awesome, he's going to make us aware of it anyway. And like I said, I, I'm wrestling with doing a study uh, with uh, on tithing and what tithing means. Um, because, again, tith tithing is too important to the Christian uh, for us not to understand what that means. Amen. So let me ask. Are, are, are there any other questions I can answer before we jump into our lesson this morning, this today? I think, I think we all questioned out, sir. Thank you. Did, did you all question out? Did, 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 did. Thank you. All right, no problem. Then let's do this. Let's open up our word, uh, our Bible, to Genesis chapter 4. We're moving into Genesis chapter 4. Amen. Uh, this is the story of Cain and Abel. A amen. Uh, in fact, this is uh, Genesis chapter 4 is all about Cain and Abel. Well, the beginning is Cain and Abel. Then the last, the second part is the establishment of civilization. Uh, and we, and Carol, you has mentioned this earlier in your, when you were setting up your question where uh, you indicated uh, that we know that Cain, that God accepted Abel's uh, offering uh, but did not accept Cain's, and, 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 and you're right, it's because of obedience, and we're going to look at what the requirements of the two offerings were, so that you can see how and why God would have found Abel obedient in his offering, and Cain disobedient in his offering, uh, amen. So let's do this. Let me read the word to you. Let me, amen, amen. I'm going to read what we're going to do. I'm going to break this scripture up into segments. Uh, and the first segment is the first seven verses of, of chapter four, all right? I'm, I will read from the new revised standard version of the scripture. The word of God reads as follows. Now the man knew his wife, Eve, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have produced a man with the help of the Lord. Next she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a tiller of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel, for his part, brought of the firstlings of his flock their fat portions. And the, Lord, and the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is lurking at the door, 
Its desire is for you, but you must master it. Amen. Thus far, the word of God. Amen. So, in our scripture read for us today, we un we are informed that Adam and Eve's first child is Cain. All right, he's the eldest son of Adam and Eve. And you know, here's the funny thing: all the days of our lives, we have pronounced Cain's name as if it spells C A N E, like a walking cane. All right, or or or, or a candy cane. That that's how we pronounce his name. Um, in Aramaic, that's not how his name is pronounced. And I know this is going to get Sister Carol going today because I'm about to teach you all some stuff that is not how you've heard it in, in the past. So let me go ahead and say it. It's coming, all right? You might as well just know that I'm about to teach you some things that's going to correct some things that you've been that you've learned over, in, over time. His name, Cain's name in Aramaic is not Cain. It's Cain. It's pronounced Cain. And it's spelled phonetically K A H apostrophe hyphen Y I N. Kayan. A Kayan. All right. And uh, not only is his name mispronounced, uh, uh, but we have misunderstood what his name means. We have assumed that since the Bible, the scripture itself says, Said, has Eve says, I have produced a man with the help of the Lord. We have assumed that that's what Kyan's name means, all right? Uh, uh, that's not necessary what his name means. In Aramaic, uh, uh, his name means possession, all right? The, the name Kyan means possession, all right? Not necessary that, that a woman has produced a man with the help of the Lord. In fact, I think that's just Eve celebrating praising God of what she has accomplished that she has produced uh, a man a, a, a child uh, a human child and she knows it's only because of the Lord now here's the thing I if I may if I may put a a, a pin right there in, in our in our lesson um, um, uh, I, I do apologize if you hear little people hollering for one another because they're outside my door of the office and whatnot. But let me put a pin right there. If we recall when we were last together last week, God admonished and punished Adam and Eve by expelling them from the garden. All right? That he ran them out of the garden. What we see, at least, in, at least through Eve's declaration here at the beginning of chapter 4, is that Eve, at least Cain, Adam and Eve, attempted to stay connected with God. Okay? She is acknowledging that the only reason, only way she could have had a child was if God enabled her to have a child, which indicates to us that Adam and Eve didn't abandon their relationship with God just because God had to punish them and put them out of the out of uh, the Garden of Eden. It also says to us, God didn't abandon his relationship with Adam and Eve either. Because evidently they're still communicating. Uh, Adam and Eve are still worshiping God uh, to the point or the place where they're still recognizing that who they are and what they're capable of doing is intimately tied to their relationship with God. And, and so what this says to us right now, right here today is that even when we mess up, our messes, our messing up does not divorce us or estrange us from God. That we are still as connected today, post messed up, as we were pre mess up. Okay, that we are still God's children, post the sin, as we were. Even more so than we were before the sin, because before the sin, before the acknowledgement of Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we were called enemies. But even after, but once we uh, met Him, that didn't mean we weren't going to sin again. That's what James talks about. James says, you know, you shouldn't sin, but even if you do, you have an advocate with with the Father, and the advocate's name is Christ Jesus. In other words, what He's saying, you're still wrapped in a sinful nature, so you're going to sin. You're going to still sin. 
But here's the thing, even though we sin does not cause us to lose our salvation, it does not cause us to lose our connection to God, and it does not cause us to for God to remove from us the label child of God, disciple of God, servant of God. I mean, all you got to do is look throughout the word. There's several persons throughout God's word if they if they if they could sin, they 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 did it up. They did it up. Amen. Uh, uh, Noah. Noah, God was obedient, a righteous man, uh, built the ark. You know, uh, God, excuse me, God kept kept humanity going through Noah. But guess what? Noah liked to dip down into that alcohol just a little bit too much. And in and, and dipping down in there, Noah was the one walking around butt naked. He was the one acting like it's a pate over here. We don't see God with, withdraw his favor and anointing for Noah just because his sons found him naked. Found him uncovering his, his nakedness. Uh, uh, Abraham. I mean, Abraham, the majority of our time looking at Abraham, he is screwing it up. He is doing the absolute wrong thing. They get down to Egypt. He makes Sarah lie about who she is. You know, God tells him he's going to have children. He can't be patient. So he's dipping his, his spoon into Hagar's sugar pot. You know, uh, God, 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 I mean, it, the, the brother just, he doesn't become faithful until, until Isaac is born. We don't actually see him operate really in faith until Isaac is born. But God, God never removed or, or, or rescinded the promise that he made to Abraham. He kept it. Jake, Isaac was just like his daddy, a coward. Because when he went to Gerar, uh, uh, the city of Gerar in the Philist in, in, within Philistia, he did to Rebecca the same thing his daddy did to his mama. He made Rebecca pretend to be his sister. Again, God doesn't rescind the, the promise made uh, uh, over him. Jacob. Jacob is the biggest swindler and trickster in the Bible. I mean, everything he got, he stole. How about that? You don't you don't see God not appear and wrestle with Jacob, do you? You don't see God say, you know what? I was gonna come bless you. I was gonna get, change your name, but since you're such a thief, such a crook, such a sinner, I'm not gonna do that. No. God still shows up. God still blesses that man. God still walks with that man. He gives that man twelve sons that become the twelve tribes of of Israel. David. I mean, let's be for real. I, I mean, can you be any more disobedient than David was? You know, uh, 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 Peter. Peter was known to be drunk and ready to fight by 6.30 every evening. He got off at 5 by 6.30. He was, they were kicking him out the club because he was in there breaking bottles, ready to fight and cussing people out. Peter, we, Peter is understood to be the first recognized leader of the Christian church. In fact, the Catholic church believes he's the very first pope. He was the first one in a line of succession of popes. Paul. Paul was a murderer. Paul slayed, killed people. And, and today, 75% of the New Testament we know was authored by him. We have no doubt that it was authored by him. When I, again, I'm stressing this. I want us to see this because there are persons who have been taught and convinced that if they are disobedient to God, if they commit a sin, then God wants to have nothing to do with them. That God wipes his hands of them, that God throws them to the wolves, and that they're on their own. That is incorrect teaching. That's incorrect understanding. Just because we make a mistake, that we falter, that we fall, that we're in error, does not mean that God abandons us or leaves us. We're still here. Say what? Now, um, you know, the Bible says that 
I'll be saying that these individuals, uh, they, you know, they have they come to know Christ, and that's not, that's the first thing. Right. They have gone in the wrong direction. Right. Versus someone who has never known Christ. Right. Has gone in the wrong direction. Right, right, right. That that, that that is the distinction. That that is the distinction. We're talking about people that have a relationship with God. Through, okay. you, you know, all right. Uh, 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 um, uh, in this case, in this situation, Adam and Eve don't know Christ yet. All right. They don't know He exists yet. So their relationship is directly with God, and so, okay. it, it, and that's fine. Our relationship with God today is through our intercessor, our mediator, Christ Jesus. Okay, uh, uh, but the fact remains: it does it, it it doesn't matter if God directly relates to us or we're related to God through Christ Jesus. The fact is, we have a relationship. And I'm saying for those persons that have a relationship, just because you make a mistake doesn't mean that God's going to abandon you. Now. If you, if you have never accepted Christ Jesus as your Savior, and that's for us living today, that's after God has accomplished what he accomplished on the cross. Amen. Got to remember, we cannot hold God's standard for us today with people back then. All right? God had not sent Jesus. All right? It had, in fact, he had not sent the law. And so we can't even judge Adam and Eve by the law. We have to judge Adam and Eve by their obedience to the commandments they have gotten directly from God. Once God gave the law, then the judging standard is for those, from that point forward, is everyone that has come after the law is given, is whether or not they have lived up to the law. When God decided to change the standard from the law to the belief in Christ Jesus and obedience to his teachings, now the standard is, do we, have we lived up according, have we lived according to the standards? If someone never accepts Christ Jesus, they're not, in, they're not included in what I'm talking about right now. Because right, cause right now, they're still an enemy of God. Okay, thank you. Okay, so so that that's a good question. That and so thank you for yeah. saying that because that allows us to clarify something. All right, mm -hmm. go ahead, Carol. I hear you say well. Go ahead. Oh no, I don't have anything. <laughs> oh, I, you sure? I hear you say well. Because <laughs> that, that, that's how Carol starts off her questions. I, I've been paying attention to that. She will say uh -huh. well and then go into a question. <laughs> And so I heard that well. <laughs> Not a problem. But but again, that's a good question that needed to be asked to to uh, 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 deal with the distinction here. All right, we're talking about people that have a relationship. Adam and Eve were born having a relationship with Christ. I, I'm not with Christ with God. And so it's and, and so the the idea, the thought is. And I've heard this preach and taught that per, that that there are pastors and ministers that have argued that when God kicked Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden, that he ended the relationship he had with them. He didn't end the relationship. They just could no longer occupy the Garden of Eden because they were now marked by sin. But he is with them every step of the way. In fact, God's intention, the, the very moment he kicks them out of the Garden, is to start figuring out how he can get them back into the garden. I mean, at that point, he knew he had to do something to restore the spiritual purity of his creation. And so, God's, again, God's intention has never been for us to be estranged from God. God's intention has always been for us, meant for us to be with him. To remain connected to him, to have to have ongoing communion and fellowship with him, that's God's intention. And so, so I, I wanted us to, to see that, because you know, as I was saying, there are persons that literally walk around thinking that because they made a mistake after they accepted Christ, that they've lost Christ. You ain't you ain't lost Christ. Yeah, you ain't lost Christ. You don't need to be rebaptized. You don't need to have a second right, exactly. confession of faith. You are still as saved as you were. You just made a mistake. Right. 
And now that you made a mistake, what God is expecting you to do is not to hide it, not to run from it, but to stand up, be accountable for it, and, and let Jesus mediate for you. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you, counsel you, encourage you, equip you so that you don't make the mistake again. But at the same time, let Christ Jesus be mediating your mistake so that God gives you the forgiveness that you're seeking. See this that see that's why I love David's story as much as I as much as I do. Okay, uh, it ain't that David's perfect. David was a screw up, and he's a screw up. He's a typical screw up. He's a typical person. But what you always notice about David is that once David has learned that he has messed up with God, whether God told him directly or God sent uh, Samuel or Nathan to talk to him, the prophets to talk to him. David wasted no time falling on his face, getting right with God. None. No time. Wasted no time. And what happened? Every time he went back to God, God accepted him. Because you want to know why? He was a man after God's heart. Not that doesn't mean that that that's saying doesn't mean that he had God's heart. No, he's a man pursuing God's heart. He's, he's pursuing God. And because David was earnest and honest in his pursuit of God, God's like, I'll let him have all of me that he wants. So every time David says, please don't take your anointing from me because I messed this up, God said, no, no, I'm not going to take it from me. In fact, let me give you double anointing. Since, you, since you're the only one that got the sense enough to run to me instead of away from me, let me give you double of what you're seeking. You know, so again, I wanted to point that out as we're in our lesson here today. Amen. So, so Cain's name is originally is really pronounced Cain, and his name really means possession. All right, Adam and Eve's second child, Amen, is Abel, or at least that's what we've been calling him. We've been saying his name as if it's if it's pronounced like the word A B L E, Abel. Again, that's incorrect. That that is what we have been told what we've uh, uh, adopted from years of misinformation in Aramaic uh, amen uh, in Aramaic uh, the name is pronounced Havel Havel uh, phonetically is spelled H-E-H dash B-E-L but that B would be pronounced as a V the so it's Havel H-E-H okay, dash b e l uh that's the phonetic spelling of uh of 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 of, of abel's name uh, if you're going to say it you're going to say it in aramaic it's pronounced havel uh just like uh david uh we we spell his name d a v i d david in aramaic it's pronounced dawu <laughs> I do. Go go ahead. Another, another question there, there, there it is. There it is. I'm ready. Here it comes. Get ready. When we're talking to other people, we say pronounce it like we say they won't know who we're talking about. I, I I know. But guess what? You're that strangely. I know, but wait a second. Right. Right, right. but but information we've been saying it incorrectly. Yes, that's 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 what's happened. That's what's happened. But but again, that that gives you a chance to have what what I call teachable moments. Every day, God gives us teachable moments where we, either we're taught something or we're giving the opportunity to teach someone else something. So when you're having a conversation, let's say uh, you're sitting there. Uh, on the couch, company comes over, and, and and the company just comes out of the booth and says, you know what, I don't know why, but I've been thinking about King David, and about the mistake that he made uh, with Bathsheba. You know, that, 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 that's a good time to say, you know what, 
well, we've been talk we, we we were recently talking about King David in in at church, and one of the things we learned is uh, that his name in Aramaic is Dawu. It's not pronounced David. That David is an English uh, uh, trans transliteration of his Aramaic name. His name is Dawu. You know what I'm saying? And and uh, and that name has a, a meaning. Uh, amen. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, John is God's grace. David is, I, I can't remember what David meant, God's blessing or God's grace. It means, uh, no, no, John is God's grace. David is God's blessing. All right. That's what the name means, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, so, you know, that you, you have that moment while you've got persons there to teach them uh, what, what it means. You know what I'm saying? Or, or better yet, they say, you know, I don't understand why God was so mad uh, that that David slept with Bathsheba. I mean, we see people sleeping with people all the time. That's your chance. That's a teachable moment for you to teach. This ain't so much the whole issue of David sleeping with Bathsheba. This was really an issue of obedience that God had told David not to do it. And David was as disobedient as he wanted to be. And that God was upset about David's disobedience more so than about the act uh, that, that, that this was David doing exactly the opposite of what God wanted him to do. Again, we're, we're given teachable moments. And, and, and you, you, you hit on it, Carol. A lot of us are too afraid to stand in the pulpit and to, and to say it the way it needs to be said because we know for 300 years this is how we've been taught it. And we're afraid that if we teach it the right way, we'll scare our leadership so much that our leadership will ask for our resignation. I'm serious. I, I'm serious. I, I, I'm absolutely... I, 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 I'm absolutely serious. The leadership was would ask for our resignation. But it but if we're gonna have these times of focused study, okay, and if I'm going to be the leader that God has called you to be, I believe in fact let me say this. This is a little off topic, but it'll it'll make sense in a moment. Okay. As I sit back and look at the state of the church. What I found is that we have become comfortable in our brokenness. We have become comfortable repeating the lies that have been told to us. Okay? I can't tell you how, how upsetting it is when I see, when I walk into churches and I see pictures of Pope Berwaz or Berzai's son hung on the wall and people are calling it Jesus. We, we, you, 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 you do know that that picture of the white man with the long blonde hair with the beard, right, right. beard yeah, yeah. That, that is not an accurate portrayal of Jesus. In fact, right. th there was a Pope about the uh, Eighth or ninth century, named Pope. Maybe a bit. I think he's a little later, the eleventh, eleventh or twelfth. But his name was Pope um, Bourgeois. He was actually part of the Italian mafia. The mafia had infiltrated the church at one point. Uh, uh, and what happened? The, the the legend is, or the history is, that he was in love with his son. Wouldn't let anyone come near his son. Was very particular about the women that his son interacted with. He thought his son was a vision of perfection. And so what he did, he required every Catholic artist to take down the pictures that they had already had of Jesus up and to redo these pictures in the image of his son. That's why we have this one uniform vision of this white Jesus with long straight hair, with a beard, looking like he needs to eat, because that was what this Pope's son looks like. If if G, if we w were to uh, uh, to apply uh, uh, the uh, uh, the word the, the truthfully, Jesus would look like a dark skinned Arab or a light skinned African. He he would look like us. He looked just like yeah, us, yeah, yeah. all right. Okay. And I'm saying that to say, I have walked in churches with, with pastors 
that have been to school, that know that that's an incorrect image, know that's not even Jesus, and they are letting it stay up because Miss Jenkins, who's been a member of the church for 87 years, just declares that that's her Jesus. And I even told, and I've even asked my, why do you like it? Because Miss Jenkins, I'd like to take it down, give it to Miss Jenkins, and put a new picture up. If Miss Jenkins is that in love with the picture, let her have it. Let her take it home. But why are you uh, 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 perpetuating something that's wrong, a wrong teaching? If anything, what happened, you are worshiping the same idol that the Pope himself worshiped. Because he made his son, that Pope made his son an idol for God. And here's the thing, one, God said you should have no other image of me, but, but even in that, he did give us a person. And we know who this person is. And so again, my job, especially as I look at a critique of the church, is this, whenever I'm given the opportunity to teach you what is right, what is true, what is accurate, is to teach you that. Now, if you still want to remain doing it wrong, when you go, when you meet Jesus and you meet God on judgment, you'll be standing by yourself because I want God to say, I sent my son to teach you, and, he, and when he means me, I sent my son, Pastor Al, to teach you the right way and you still want it to do it the wrong way, so that's on you. You do it however you want to do it. Don't, he, his blood, your, your, his blood is, your blood is not on his head. Amen. So, uh, yes, I know you haven't heard it before. I know a lot of folks ain't going to teach it to you like this. But if we are going to be uh, disciples and stewards of walk in truth, then we got to walk in truth about everything. Not just not just uh, uh, whether or not we're faithful to our spouses or whether or not we give a, are faithful in our tithes. we got to be faithful in our study, too. And I have to be faithful in the teaching. Um, uh, amen. Praise God. And, and here's another thing. Let me ask this question. Okay, go ahead. Um, you're right. In most cases, not all cases, that naturally that's probably not going to be received well, if you will. Right. You know what I mean? All right. Now, uh, I guess the bottom line is this, all right? Uh, uh, let, let me make, make this uh, statement. That should not interfere with one's salvation as far as him or her accepting Christ as Satan. Am I right or wrong as far as that's concerned? It, it it should not, but what but, but what's happened is, God, God God gave us a very simple formula for salvation. It's simply this: if you believe in your heart that Jesus is right, Lord right, right. and confess with your mouth right. that He is right. Lord, you'll be saved to the glory of God. Now 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 now, you gotta understand this belief is just simply not you saying I believe that Jesus is Lord. This belief is a is a Un, 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 undeniable, unshakable, unquenchable belief with all your being that God, that Jesus is the Messiah of God, the Christ of God that came to take away the the, the, the sins of the world, and it's also a a faith that's willing to make this profession in front of others. You know, we we t we, we 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 live in a day and age where you're not harm for your profession of faith because we live in a in basically a christian a christian society so 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 you, you're not you, you it's not that it's not dangerous for us to to make this profession but there was a time when it was dangerous to make this profession okay and there are still places in this world right now where if you live in china it's extremely dangerous to profess christ because the state religion is communism all right and, and and Christians in China have to hide and and and, and have church undercover because if they have it publicly, they will be crucified, they will be killed. All right, and so uh, so the hardest declaration of faith that many of us make is having to stand before our congregation and say, "I have received Christ Jesus; He's now my Lord and Savior." 
and 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 then in, in fact in fact we don't even realize that that decoration ain't the, really the decoration that God really wants to hear. It's a decoration when we get out here in the world and the world is asking us to make a decision. Who do you love more, God or uh, or the world? That's the declaration of faith he wants to hear then. It, does no, it really does no good to tell a bunch of believers that you have faith because we already believe. You ain't making us believe. You ain't helping us believe. We, we, in fact, we're glad that our belief helped convert you. But, but, but it's when we get out in the world and we're with a bunch of naysayers, a bunch of heathens, a bunch of Gentiles, a bunch of non-believers, and they are in our face talking about what do you believe? A... I, I have learned to, to, to repeat the words of Joshua, but for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, okay? Amen. Amen. There's a reason why we're given that scripture. We're given it so that when it's time to declare the faith, we can declare it, all right? All right? So, that, that's the formula. That's it. But there's some some denomin Christian denominations that say that if you can't speak in tongues, you ain't saved. That's true. Wait a second. Yeah, wait, wait, wait a second. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. Paul especially deals with this in Corinthians and say that this is not an indication of salvation. Right. He he because he says this is a gift that's not given to everybody. I don't have the gift to speak that's in right. tongues. I don't have it. Right. As much as I play, as, as much as I play with it all the time, you'll hear me say "shabba dabba do" or "yabba dabba do." I should have bought a Hyundai, should have bought a Honda, and I'm back. You, 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 you hear me play with it. I'm only playing with it because I don't have it. Right. And here's another thing. This is another thing what God, God said through Paul. Okay, that whenever someone is talking in tongues, there should be someone that can interpret the tongues. And every time we've seen tongues occur in the Bible, whether Old Testament or New Testament, someone's there that recognizes the tongue and interprets what they're saying. So guess what? Paul didn't make that up. Paul is pulling from from from, from experience. I, we are, you're getting ready to see in our sermon series, Joseph is getting ready to meet his brothers. They're going to come to Egypt. They don't recognize Joseph. Joseph has learned how to speak Coptic, okay? Coptic is the language of Egypt, the ancient language of Egypt. He's learned how to speak Coptic. And so guess what? Uh, he speaks Coptic to his brothers because he doesn't want them to know that who he really is, all right? And so what he does, he's speaking in a tongue, and the word says he's got a translator that's translating his Coptic tongue to it to, to Aramaic so that his brothers can 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 understand it. Okay. That that's a tongue. Amen. Uh, 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 again, we see it over and over and over uh, 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 when 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 someone is speaking in tongues. It, and like Paul said, it's, it's meant for personal edification. It ain't meant for everybody. That's why we don't all have it, you know. So 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 any so I get I I, I get the I get the raised eyebrows and the duck lips when I hear someone say, "If you don't speak in tongues, you uh you 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 ain't saved." Here's another one that was happening. Here's another one that was happening when I was a kid in the seventies and the eighties. There was this uh, thing going around where if you couldn't handle snakes, uh, poisonous snakes, you weren't you weren't you weren't saved. That that if, that that if you picked up a poison snake and the snake bit you, that was proof from God that you weren't saved. No, no, that's proof from God that you're an idiot. That's what that's proof. <laughs> These are poisonous snakes. Their job is to bite you. If you if you've been paying attention to, to Genesis chapter three, he already said that the, the, that the descendants of the woman and the descendants of the snakes are going to have en enmity between us. That 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 we're going to step on his head. It's going to bite our ankles. So for for anyone to be holding a rattlesnake, a a, a, a viper, or a asp. 
a, a, a cobra and you get bit, I think that's the will of the Lord. I think God has done what he needs to do because you are too stupid to, uh, and, and I know someone's going to get mad and say, Pastor, you shouldn't be saying that. But no, you were too stupid. Uh, you were too stupid to recognize that salvation is not dependent on whether or not you can uh, uh, handle snakes. And you know what people do? They, they go back to where Moses raised up the snake in the desert. And again, they miss they miss that point. They miss that point. And Jesus even talks about that. You miss the point of why he did that. It wasn't so that we could walk around holding snakes up and getting bit and dying. It was so God could show who who he was and his authority in through Moses by keeping Moses from being bit. So again, all this other stuff, speaking in tongues. Here's another one. Uh, I, I, I was I was watching a, 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 a service and I heard a pastor say, if you can't praise dance, then yet something's wrong with your... What? Wait, wait, wait a second. First of, first, 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 yeah, first of all, my, my pray, the way I praise God may not be in my dancing. It may be, it, it, it may be in my quiet time. It may be in my singing. It may be in my shedding of tears. It may be in the fact that I have to get away from all y'all and just go someplace where him and I can just be alone together. Just because I can't get a two-step going, that two-step that folks do, we see in church, that that practice, and here they that practice two-step. You have to practice how to do it. You just don't get up doing that. You know, that practice two-step. I don't know. I have no idea, sir. But thank, thank, thank you, uh, <laughs> you know, just because I just because I don't do it like that doesn't mean I'm not saved, and I'm not saying that just because you do it doesn't mean that you are saved. When I look at the word, the word tells me. Jesus, it, it's it, 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 and again, Paul and the word are on the same page. That he, that whoever shall believe that in, in Christ Jesus and that God sent him for our sins shall not die but have eternal life. That's the same thing as Paul saying, if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, is Christ to the Lord, uh, to the glory of God, you shall have eternal life. You shall be saved. Same thing. Those are the requirements I see in the Bible. All this other stuff. Here's another one. If you drink wine, you, I remember I went for, to a, Sean, let me make you laugh, bro. I went to a, a pastoral, uh, I had a pastoral interview in Richmond, Okay. And uh, one of the deacons, uh, he, I could tell he's a problem. You know, you can always tell who the problems are by their demeanor and how they act around other people. So, he's a problem. Yeah, he's he's a problem. He he's he was the hard. He was he was the one that was a hard one. Because uh, 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 because I, I later I talked to another later on I talked to another member of the uh, of the uh, of the pastoral search com committee at a reception they had for me after I preached. And she said she had been trying, she and a couple other than trying to work with this pastor to get him to understand that whoever they brought in was not going to be like the pastor that they lost, okay? That their pa their pastor, their former pastor had died. And so what he was looking for, he was looking for someone to come in and be just like his former pastor, okay? And so, and, and so the former pastor had taught them that if you consumed alcohol or wine, you were not... Uh, 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 saved. Okay. Now, when he asked me that, he, he, so he said, so, so, no, because he asked, he said, it's your anniversary. You and your wife go out and the waiter brings you a bottle of wine. Are you going to drink? I said, yeah, hopefully we drink the whole bottle because that bottle is expensive. <laughs> and I, and I, and I, I don't believe in wasting anything. So between the two of us, hopefully we consume that whole bottle. And he looked at me and I said, oh, I said he looked at me like, like he was astonished. And I looked around the room and I said, you're not about to tell me that the word says that someone who drinks wine is not a Christian, are you? And he about to open his mouth. I said, it's time to have Bible study. And I pulled out my Bible and I took him right to that part, that part of the scripture where uh, the, 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 the Pharisees show up and they're looking at Jesus cock-eyed and crazy. And they say, what is this? How is it that your master is sitting there with sinners and prostitutes uh, and right. drinking wine and fellowshipping with them? And when Jesus overhears it and says, yep, you think I'm a wine bibber. 
because I'm drinking wine. Right. But don't you know that God did not send me for the righteous? He sent me to save those who are sick. It's not the, the well that needs a doctor. It's the sick that needs a doctor. You know, at, 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 during that day, you only had three beverages. Only there was no Coke and Pepsi products, okay? There was no, there was no Kool Aid, there was no Crystal Light, there was no uh, Dasani or or uh, Deer Park. It was simply the water you drew out the well, the goat's milk or the cow's milk, and wine. And if you were being a good host to your guests, guess what you served them? Wine. So I told him, I said, so if you can right here to judge me for, for drinking wine, then you're out of order with this with the word. And if you're going to hire me, I got to help you get back in order. Because what you're teaching is not the word. And, he, and I told them, and I said, I, and I said, this may kill my vote. Amen. If it does, fine. But let me be like, hey, because hey, no, hey, hey, at that point, hey, hey, at some point, you, you, you stop being intimidated of the pastoral research committee and you, uh, you operate in what God had you to operate. I said, evidently, I, I told him, I said, evidently, my, my purpose today is to come to give you a prophetic word. And the word is, uh, if you're not going to teach persons what's in this word, and exactly as God has given this word, then you are, you are committing a sin itself. And then you are going to have to deal with it because you're going to have their blood on your head because you're the leaders. Amen. Praise God. And so... Uh, that, and that's and that's why I'm your pastor and not theirs. <laughs> because, amen. Because they they chose to go another way. Thank you for clarifying that. I was hoping that you can go in that interview while you were pastor because. No, 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 no. This this, this, this this happened years ago. This happened before I planted, uh, before God had me plant Epiphany. This happened years ago. Okay. Uh, 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 no, 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 no. No, y'all, I, as I keep telling y'all, y'all stuck with me. Amen. I mean, hey, 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 you got two, you got two ways to look at this. Either I'm a beauty mark or I'm a rash. One of the two. But you're stuck with me. <laughs> either I'm the beauty mark that makes you look good, or I'm the rash that makes you feel bad. But but either way, you ain't you can't you ain't getting rid of me anytime soon. Amen. Amen. Praise praise God. Um, so so let's do this. Let's pause right there because we've gone now an hour and fifteen minutes. Amen. And we'll resume here next week. Uh, are there any prayer requests that we can lift up? Uh, as we are bringing our Bible study to a close here. and Jager. Okay. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. We will, I'm adding that to my list of prayers here. I, I, uh, uh, to Keisha and Jager. Jager. Okay. Amen. So here, let's go to God in prayer as, for our closing word of prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together to commune and fellowship with you here through Bible study. God, we pray that God, while you are helping us to learn, you're also helping us to realize all the mess that we have put on top of your word. And, and it has become like shackles and burdens, keeping your people from praising you and worshiping you the way you want to, to worship. God, you made salvation very easy, very simple. But God, we have put all this filth and dirt on top of it that have made it so persons do not want to come to you and to give you their lives. God, thank you for this time, this effort to uncover what your word really is, to uncover what it is you really want to do with us and through us so that God, when we go out in the world, we're able to effectively minister to others. 
that God, we're not like other persons that have called themselves Christians or Christian disciples or Christian stewards or Christian evangelists, that God, we are your servants. And they, they see through the lies we live the, uh, the truth about who you are. Father God, we thank you for Sister Carol and, 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 and Brother Sean. We thank you for Sister Yolanda and Brother Kojo and Sis, Sister Shaney and Brother Dabble and Deacon Georgia Stiles and Sister Alexis and whoever else has joined us via Facebook Live for Bible study today. God, we pray, God, for each and every one of them, God, that you would bless them all, keep them all, and enable them to be who you called them to be. Father God, we pray for Sister Takesha and Jager. That God, whatever they're dealing with, whatever they're going through, God, that you are a present help in their lives. That God, you bring them to where they need to be so that they may praise you and glorify you, God, with the rest of us. Father God, we ask right now that as we leave this Bible study session, that we never leave your presence. That you'll go with us, be with us, and help us to live as you have us live. Till we return again on Sunday morning to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father God, we love you and thank you. It's in your son's mighty, matchless, marvelous, magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, everybody. Amen. Amen. Please have a blessed day. I look forward to... Hey, hey, Brother Sean, I look forward to worshiping with you again at 7 o'clock this evening. Amen. Uh, 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 I may particularly rain comes on this, sir. Uh, yeah, but thanks for the invitation, though. Hey, 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 amen, amen, amen. You know, I got to... Got to give you a hard time, Amen. Well, 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 you, well, you have a blessed day, all right. And I will talk with the two of you later. No problem, sir. All right. Take care. You too. Bye, bye, Sister Carol. Bye, bye. Bye, bye.